time for my favorite segment, Rick's Picks. And this week, <laughs> it's one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. And Stephon Diggs, fifth-round pick, 146 overall. How did Stephon Diggs last to the fifth round? How did he end up in Minnesota? What's his draft story from your perspective? Yeah, no, I remember uh, because I why I love to go out to college games is because you never know what you're going to see. And I knew uh, Stefan was a five star recruit. He ended up staying it in in his home area in Maryland uh, to go to school uh, so his family can come watch him play. And I was at Virginia and it was 2012. And then I see this little skinny receiver <laughs> out there running around. And I'm like, who's this dude? And he said, it's just Stefan Diggs. He's a freshman. So he had four. I went back and looked at the stats. He had four catches for 89 yards. And then he had a kickoff return that looked like he was shot out of a rocket. He went <laughs> uh, three kickoff returns for 147 yards and took one to the house. So that's the one where you're kind of watching the guys, you're watching for the draft. Uh, but then all of a sudden, like on your little note sheet there, you kind of put a star. Hey, maybe this kid digs may turn into something down the road. That's all. He's only a freshman right now, but let's see what happens. Uh, why Stefan probably fell because there were some character issues that were coming out. There were some durability issues coming out. Um, but you can see that when he played, and he was he was raw. I know you were going to have to get him under control, but his just physical ability just stuck out amongst everyone else. So there's a reason why guys fall in the draft. A uh, similar guy that we took in the fourth round uh, was who played very well for us uh, was Everson Griffin, who fell mm. not because of his ability, but because of some of the off field stuff that teams had concern with. And when we talk about how you place those guys on your draft board, you may have them developed on your board in the second and third round where we had uh, actually had Stefan Diggs actually in the third round. But because of some of the concerns that we had, we were going to let it slip by and see if we can get him in a fourth, fifth round uh, mm -hmm. where we felt we can get a swing at him. And, and we were fortunate enough to do that. I have to give a lot of credit, though, to Scott Turner, uh, who was on the staff, Norv's son, who's the offensive coordinator uh, with the commanders right now. He came in, and at the time, he was a receivers coach back in 2009, 2010 at the University of Pitt. And they were trying to re recruit Stefan very heavily. So he was the one that came in and really stood on the table for him. Mm. Uh, you know, we interviewed him at the combine. The one thing that I'll never forget about Diggsy is that when you looked at his eyes, you can see what we're talking about, that competitive fire. Yes. There was competitive fire. And you knew when we drafted him and he didn't go to where we took him, uh, when he came in, he had flames shooting out of his nose and ears on how he was going to prove everybody wrong. And that first mini camp, uh, at the uh, for rookie mini camp and then through the OTAs, you can say this kid is definitely we, we may have gotten a steal out of the draft, and then the, the rest is history from there. But a lot of times, these guys and teens will develop guys on their board where their actual value is, but because there is a character concern, a durability concern, any of these alerts that we put on these kids, they may it may drop them. Um, but it have been interesting. Let's say we didn't have any character or durability concerns with uh, Stefan Diggs at the time. The guy that we took in the third round uh, was Daniil Hunter uh, that year. It was uh, Trey Waynes, I think, Eric Kendricks in the second round, and Daniil Hunter in the third. Yep, that's right. And then uh, it, uh, we, we missed on TJ Cunningham, who was an offensive tackle coming out of Pitt in the fourth. And then we ended up with, uh, with Diggs, uh, which was a. Uh, you know, again, another story, uh, not only trying to do the right evaluation and put these guys right on your draft board, but getting a, uh, a little lucky as well. So you mentioned, you uh, just so I heard you correctly, you had a third round grade on Stefan. Is that right? We had him at, uh, developed in the third round, but we had these special boxes right. that were below that if we had a character or durability concern, 
we would say he has at least third round talent, but we will put him in these boxes on our draft board that say, uh, recognize his talent, but don't take a chance on him till maybe the fourth, fifth round. Gotcha. Uh, where there's less risk financially. Uh, so, but you could potentially hit on a guy like that too, which we were fortunate enough we did. You mentioned TJ Clemens to tackle out of pit that that you, that you didn't hit on. Was there any conversation? Do you remember about taking maybe Stefan there as opposed to waiting? Yeah, yeah. No, we he his name after the third round. Uh, after we we were really sold on Hunter uh, after we got back from the LSU workout. Uh, but that <laughs> sa that Saturday, uh, his name was in play there. But a lot of times when you're in that draft room. You may be looking at your board, and um, there may be maybe one or two offensive tackles left before the depth of that even drops off farther where there's nothing left if you don't take an offensive tackle there. And then you're looking at the receiver board, whatever that may look like. There's usually a lot more names at the receiver position than there is at the offensive tackle position at that point. So we took a risk. Just say, let's wait. Uh, hopefully, we can swing back and get digs. And since there are not many offensive tackles left on our board here on Saturday, let's take a swing at an offensive tackle because those are usually harder to come by. No, and that actually makes sense. Uh, I know you don't. I'm, I'm. You may know this. I'm assuming you don't. Do you know how many wide receivers are drafted before Stefan went? No, I do not. Eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah, starting with Amari Cooper, and then Rashad Green was the last one drafted before. Uh, Stephon Diggs went off the board. And still, I mean, still some good, like Kevin White didn't work out. Defonde Parker, Nelson Aguilar, Brashad Perryman, Philip Dorsett, Devin Smith got hurt. Uh, I mean, this is a list of guys that went early, and it just shows you the the volatility of drafting these guys. Tyler Lockett's a, a fantastic young player. who's He's still, in my mind, might be one of those underrated players in the NFL. But obviously, Stephon Diggs, I think his name's at the top of this list, which is, is just sort of crazy.